Hello and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar and this week we're gonna take a tour. We're gonna take a tour of the Retro Bar. We're gonna go take a look at all of these computers and devices all around me and just kind of see what there is, what I have, what projects I need to work on, and, uh, and then talk a little bit about expansion, things that I want to do to this area to make it more functional in the future. But I think uh, it's been long enough. I think people have been asking and waiting, and I think it's time to take a tour of this retro bar. But of course, first, we're going to need to make ourselves a drink. So since we're walking around, I think it's only appropriate that we have a walking drink. Now normally I would just do a walking beer, but uh, in this case we're gonna do a margarita, and that's for a couple of reasons. One, Cinco de Mayo's coming up, two, summer is coming up, and three, it's one of my favorite drinks to make. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get started with a margarita. We're gonna start with two ounces Reposado tequila, one half ounce of simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of Contro and three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Put all of that in a shaker. We're going to add some ice and we're going to shake. Now we're going to strain that into our glass and add some fresh ice. And there you have a margarita. Cheers. They're so good. They're just so good. All right, let's take a look at all this stuff. So in 2007, whenever I kind of became internet famous or whatever um, amongst uh, Mac collectors, a guy came out to my house who made a video on my basement um, from this, uh, not even YouTube yet, because YouTube wasn't until 2009. Um, it was a, a video podcast called Lo-Fi St. Louis. And he came out and did a profile of my basement. And so ever since I've moved, which was 10 years ago, I haven't had that place, this, this place in my house where I could interact with and display all of my collection. The basement was just a basement. And so because of the pandemic, I finally had the time to put the energy into finishing this basement. And so I was able to paint the rafters and build these light fixtures and build all these tables um, and then go to Ikea and get all the rest of this furniture so that I could finish this basement and I could finally have a, a version 2.0, if you would, of my computer collection. And so I think what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is I'm going to switch to a point of view camera um, on a gimbal and I'm just going to kind of walk through uh, all of the stuff that I have down here. So. Uh, Let's do that. So I'm gonna start with the Apple computers and then work my way around. So we'll just head on over here. And you can see I've got an Apple IIe. And next to that, an Apple IIgs. And next to that, a Macintosh 2. Now, this Macintosh 2, I think, needs to be fully recapped, and I think the monitor also needs to be recapped. So, we've got a non-functioning Macintosh 2 here, but uh, I put it out on display because I still think it's a good placeholder. Next to that is the Quadra 950, which, if you watch my SCSI to SD video, you can see how I put a SCSI to SD in this uh, computer. And next to that, I've got a Power Mac G3, which I feel more appropriate in this spot should be a 8500 or a, a 9600 or something of the late Power PC, not G series computers. But for right now, that's what I have. Here you can see the blue and white G3 Power Mac with the 21 inch monitor. And that is the biggest monitor that I own, which is crazy. And then next to this is what I think is the best looking tower ever made. And that is the Quicksilver G4. I just love the look of this machine. I think it's so amazing. Next to that, we've got a Mir Drive Door G4. And next to that, we've got a G5. And next to that, I've got a Mac Pro, but I do not have the monitor yet. I wanted to make sure that these were the first computers you saw when you came down the stairs, because I do think Apple has 
consistently made great looking computers the entire time. Um, and you notice that all of these are separates, or as I would call it, like CPU and monitor separate, um, not all in ones. Um, and that is because I do plan on doing another room that's just Apple all in ones. Um, but this is gonna be more of a hands-on area. That is why this is set up that way. So in front of the Mac wall is the thing that you guys see every week. And that is this room divider that I have of just computers that I think look awesome. And then over here is my console wall and modern TV. And you can see right now it's got Xbox One running. And uh, next to that is my PS5, my Google Stadia, which I got for free for probably being a YouTube subscriber. <laughs> so I've never really played it. Um, and then uh, my Switch. And I've got some books and some coasters next to that. Now, if we go into this, we can see that, hello. Uh, <laughs> so if we go over here, we can see that for playing games and because I have all of these wired into a switcher and hooked up to this one monitor, um, I went with a lot of the analog systems instead of the, the original version. So if an analog system is available, that's what I'm using. So you can see I've got the analog version of the uh, NES and the analog version of the Super NES. If I come up to the next row, I can see I've got my N64 and my GameCube, which you see me do the DVD-ROM replacement on that system. And then above that is the Wii and the Wii U. So that kind of covers all my Nintendo systems. And for this, I'm gonna actually open up this cabinet. I've got the analog version of the Genesis or the Mega Drive. And then behind it is my sister's original Mega Drive, because I never owned one, the, the Genesis. And, uh, and then another one that I acquired recently. So um, they're mostly for display. And then in front of it is the one that I actually play, which is uh, the analog system. If we head over here, we've got my Xbox cabinet, and that is the original Xbox, which is my original Xbox, which I actually bought on launch day. And then below that are two Xbox 360, both in black and in white. And next to that, we've got PlayStations. So I've got the PS1 at the very top, and then below that, the PS2 that I got at Goodwill for $2, I believe? and uh, PlayStation 3, and heading over here. This is the spot where the PlayStation 4 will go, but prices got crazy through the pandemic, so I'm waiting for it to come down. Uh, and then below that is my Xbox One. And then this is just a kind of a display case of knickknacks, and you can see I have a lot of <laughs> RMC stuff in there right now. I think eventually it's gonna have a, a TurboGrafx-16 um, and some other kind of more random systems there. But that is my console wall. You can see that all from here. Down at the bottom is where I do all the routing. Uh, I have a uh, analog switcher and an HDMI switcher so that I can get more inputs into this TV. Um, it's also where I have all the controllers set up in the drawers for charging. So it's a pretty good setup. If we come just to the side of this living room area, we've got my display area. And uh, up top is uh, me recently going crazy and trying to get all the Sierra games that I had when I was younger. And uh, I think I've done a pretty decent job. Those will probably go on display in another area eventually, but for right now, that's where they are. Below that, let's see, we've got my PC Junior, which I recently recapped uh, before I started the channel, and a lot of the software that I got from Computer Reset. And then of course below that is my PC Convertible, which was one of the first computers I bought when I was getting back into collecting. And then below that is my LC580, which I bought new in box, I believe in 2004. 
and then an iMac G5. And then we'll just pop over here and I've got a Tandy 1000 EX, which is my only Tandy machine. And I plan on doing some upgrades to that in the future, so that'll be cool. Um, the Mac Plus, which you saw that I recapped in a previous video, and next to it, that Brainstorm Black Mac Plus, which I need to do a video on, but there's a lot of research that I need to do first because I need to figure out what it is. Um, I know it was used for video editing, uh, at least logging videos, but uh, beyond that, I don't know much, and it's hard to find some information online. So anyway, stay tuned. I'll hopefully get to that. There's the Audrey, which was one of my first videos. And then uh, next to that, the original iPod. And then above this is awesome looking Japanese computers. So I've got my Sharp MZ80C, which I really wanna do a video on really soon. And then next to that is my Sony HB F1 MSX2 computer which is awesome with that red stripe. And then we'll come over here and then we've got that iMac. Uh, that's actually the my dad's original iMac. Um, mine is in a separate area for display. And then uh, my netbook here, this Dell netbook, which actually is a Hackintosh, so it actually runs uh, Mac OS 10.6. Below that is my Amiga, which you saw the unboxing and me kind of exploring that video. And actually in the future, I plan on doing a pretty hefty upgrade video to that. And then this Toshiba was my laptop when I was in college. And uh, it still works, everything's still great on it. And uh, actually I got a new battery pretty recently. So everything about this machine is awesome and still have it. So put that on display. And then below that is the original IBM PC 5150 and then a smaller Lego IBM 5150 next to it. Over here is my TI-99 4A and I uh, haven't really done a lot with that. I just think it's cool in that black and silver style. Uh, these are the two Japanese consoles I got when I was on my honeymoon. Of course, the Famicom and the Super Famicom. And uh, because I can emulate all of that on the analog systems, I didn't need to have them plugged in, so I can just have them out and looking awesome. Um, this is a national MSX-1 computer. So uh, first generation of uh, MSX machines. Lego, of course. <laughs> There's the uh, Mario Kart from my first video. And then next to that, the Bondi Blue iMac, which we took a look at in my 1998 internet video. So that's my display case. And these I plan on rotating out and having on display. And this is where you can see a lot of the collection looking pretty awesome. Now, if we travel around, we get to what I call the octet. And that is the eight PCs in new cases. So the first machine I have here is the NUXT uh, Turbo XT machine running DOS 3.3. And uh, of course it's got the uh, XT IDE built into it and uh, basically has no moving parts and no cards because I wanted to keep it kind of stock. So it still does PC beeper sounds. I didn't even put an ad lib in it. So next to the NUXT is the 286, which you saw me do the build video of. That is running DOS 3.3 and I have Windows 1 and Windows 2 running on it. And uh, it's got an ad lib in it. So yeah, it's a pretty great machine. And again, I've got a video of that already built. Over here on this side, I've got my 386, and this is the machine that I probably use the most. Um, and it's got an MT32 on it. So it is running DOS 5 and Windows 3.0. It's got a Sound Blaster, an original Sound Blaster in it, and a, a Seeing Labs graphics card. So next to that is my 486. It is running DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.11. It has a Sound Canvas SC55 Mark II. And uh, it's running an A32 sound card. I actually have a Voodoo in this. <laughs> and uh, 
and also a pretty decent uh, graphics card uh, for 2D stuff. And it's in this other case because a lot of stuff still needs CD-ROMs, so it has room to actually have an optical drive in it. All right, coming around over here, we have kind of the same setup, except for this is my Windows 95 machine. This is a Pentium, and it is, uh, has a Roland Sound Canvas 88 Pro, and it has dual Voodoo 2s, uh, I can't remember what the regular graphics card is. And then also it has a Sound Blaster AW64. And then again, optical drive because it still needed one. Next to that is my Windows 98 machine, which you saw in my internet of 1998. And uh, it has uh, a SATA drive. <laughs> um, and again, a very beefy, I think, a. a faster than it should be for the era graphics card just so I can kind of have a catch-all of all the games that I might want to run on it. But that is the Windows 98 machine. I swing around over here. I have my Pentium 3. My Pentium 3 is one running Windows 2000 and that is because Windows 2000 was really the last operating system I really ran on a PC and so I kind of have this guy pretty maxed out. Yeah, so this guy has an ATI All-in-Wonder 9700, Creative Labs Sound Blaster Autogy, and uh, I've also got an external CD-ROM and floppy drive on this guy. So this is kind of like my transfer computer as well. But yeah, next to this is my Pentium 4 running Windows XP. So finally, this last part of the collection is uh, stuff that I will swap out with the display wall or things that are particularly nostalgic for me. So of course, the first thing we have here is my IBM 5160, which you saw on my December video. And then next to that, I have a Commodore 64, which I never grew up with a Commodore 64. I don't know anybody who had a Commodore 64. Um, and so I'm not uh, super familiar with them, but Retro people seem to really love them and I need to get more into it. So I need to do a lot more with the Commodore 64 because I'm just not super familiar with. Next to that is my IBM AT. And that of course has the uh, LCD panel in the monitor. Uh, next to that is a Next. Uh, it's just a, a Next station. It's black and white. Um, I think it just needs a battery, but I think I'm gonna do a recap while I'm at it because I don't wanna mess anything up with it. I really like it. I really like Next OS. I think it's great. And then finally, I've got my 20th anniversary Macintosh. And that is just one of my favorite looking computers and I like having it out and on display because a lot of people have never seen this guy and uh, it's really great. So yeah, so that is my computer collection. So there you have it. There is a tour of my interactive <laughs> computer space, my retro bar. Now there's two major things that I still need to do that I haven't done yet. And one is to build the actual bar. Behind this couch here and in the spot where I usually have that white cart, that is going to eventually be a bar. And uh, I plan on having a, a display area as well as having a spot where a computer can sit. And that will be like the computer of the week or the computer of the month. Um, and I plan on having people over to use these computers and to play games on them or to play games on these consoles. So all of this is set up as a way to have 
interactive experiences with vintage computers. And I'm excited to do that now that me and my wife are both fully vaccinated. So that's gonna be great now that we can finally start to have people over again. So the second thing that I wanna do is to add networking cable uh, to get everything networked here on all of these uh, computers so that I can get files to them, files from other computers. So um, I think that'll be a lot of fun and a lot of cool. Um, I think that'll be a lot of fun and it'll be cool. Um, but yeah, uh, once the bar is done, then I think it's gonna really feel complete to me. Um, but at this point, it's displayable, it's usable, it's interactive. It's gonna achieve a lot of the things that I want. And uh, like I said, we can finally start to host people and to have people in this space. So uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing. And of course, I'll see you next time.